So I'm going to focus on the quantitative evaluations. So obviously a very complex effort to evaluate with quantitative methods nine different types of interventions at different scales in different countries. So the partners who were working on these interventions were involved and led the evaluations. But in order to facilitate that, we developed a overall evaluation framework. But particularly important from the very beginning was that we were all working with the inherit model. And the evaluations were therefore theory-based using the inherit model. And to make this visible and clear in terms of the evaluation and the theories behind the evaluation, we developed, first of all, a generic logic model with our partners in, in the Netherlands. And together, the inherit model and the logic model form the common analytical framework. So what is an, a, log a logic model? It's essentially, it's a graphical way of presenting what you do in an intervention and what kind of outcomes you expect to have. Because the evaluations of what you do or what you expect to happen very much depend on the context in which you're doing the intervention. That would include the national context, because different countries around Europe have very different contexts in some cases. Some have, when we're talking about green spaces, there may be even like many more green spaces available. Some interventions are in urban areas, some are less urban, there may be peri-urban areas. When we're talking about different kinds of cities across Europe, they have very different levels of infrastructure, for example, for cycling. So these all need to be taken into account when you describe the context. Also, the policy context is important. Um, obviously, in Europe, there are various European directives which European countries need to follow to do with sustainability. So that's one aspect. Um, but equally, countries themselves have different kinds of regulations which really can relate to how your interventions can work. In the, in the inherit logic model, it's literally a table where you include all these thoughts that you have about what you need to put, what kind of resources you need to put in place to have an effect. And then you're looking at the outcomes and activities that then follow on. When you put, put some input in, what are the outputs? So for example, they can include stakeholder engagement, how many um, people are around the table, um, intersectoral collaboration and indeed in many cases what kind of number of citizens are involved in the project. So those kind of outputs in terms of the numbers of meetings, the numbers of people involved, but also the kinds of strategies that are developed and plans. So if you remember from the inherit model, at its heart, it's got the behavior change model derived by Susan Mickey and her group at UCL. And within this, it looks at capability, motivation, and opportunity. So as it's rather difficult in many cases, and interventions are relatively short term, they may be uh, small, relatively small scale, to actually be able to evaluate health outcomes can be difficult. But one could, and we have, evaluated the effects on health behaviours and those determinants of health behaviours, namely the capability to change behaviour, so the level of knowledge and awareness people might have, the opportunity to change behaviour, so is the physical, the environmental context changing to help you change, or the social social environment, is that supportive of your change in behaviour? And motivation. So motivation can be reflective, so depending on your reasoning and thought processes, you make a decision to do something or not to do something. Inherit's very interested in this triple win, in the 
potential impacts on health, equity, and environmental sustainability. So assessing impacts on equity is a challenge. And the way Inherit addressed it was very dependent on the different kinds of contexts and different kinds of interventions. So some interventions took place in deprived areas. So the neighborhood was deprived. So the inter interventions were very much targeted to those sites. So one wasn't able to look at equity per se, but by changing the conditions in which the people in the deprived area lived, improving their environmental conditions that they're living in, one could infer that there would be some benefit to them, which potentially in the future would help reduce the inequalities and contribute to health equity. And next we think about the outcomes that we expect and how we can measure those. So the generic logic model proposed a set of indicators and they're linked to the kind of outcomes you might expect from these kind of interventions. So because the interventions have at their heart behavior change, behavior change uh, as a response to changing context. So we want to know in terms of the outcomes how the context has changed. So are there more green spaces? Are there green spaces more accessible? And how that changes behavior. Beyond that, we're also interested in health outcomes, in outcomes for the environment and environmental sustainability, and also equity in terms of improving the conditions of those worst off in society. So there's a big challenge, obviously, in trying to evaluate multiple kind of outcomes like that. And in fact, Inherit is breaking boundaries in doing this because it is difficult to do. It hasn't been done really before. People may look at the effect of interventions or environmental interventions on health behavior. They may look at the impacts of how, um, obviously health interventions on equity but we're combining these because we're looking at the impacts on health, equity, and environmental sustainability. To develop the evaluation frame, we looked at a set of tools that could be used across the piece, across all these different kinds of, uh, well, the nine different kinds of interventions that were being evaluated this way. And so we wanted to find tools that were validated that were multiple languages that weren't too cumbersome in terms of being used by people because there's a thing called user fatigue or respondent fatigue when you have too many questions in a survey the, the responses tend well you have fewer respondents if you have a very long uh, list of questions so we had to be mindful of that and the, the tools needed to be validated and reliable so we carried out a systematic review of potential kind of tools to use, and we came up with one that was useful in assessing physical activity. It's called the International Physical Activity Questionnaire. We found a useful food preference, preference questionnaire. We also assessed mental well-being because mental, mental well-being can change in a relatively short period of time. It's one of those health outcomes that can change in a relatively short period of time. Um, so we used the Warwick Edinburgh Mental Wellbeing Scale and for children we used a modification that has been validated for the use in children. We also use an observation tool to study people's level of physical activity in parks or green spaces that we were interested in. So I've explained how we've looked at health behaviours and potential health outcomes, how we've looked at equity, but how do we look at environmental sustainability? Again, that's been a challenge because of the short-term nature of these interventions. But what we've been able to do, in some cases, obviously, the intervention is in itself an environmental intervention. So the green space interventions have improved an environment. Um, not only that, there's been a change in people's attitudes to the environment because they're using those spaces more. 
And it's very important if we want to hold the environment as precious to us that everybody can appreciate it and everybody can have access to it. 